Let's take a look at the Fuso starting grid for the last time in 2014 and from the pole. He's 10th of the year, Scotty McLaughlin, and alongside him, Garth Panda, equal best qualifying performance. Shane Van Gisberg, and great job for third, then James Courtney in fourth. He's got a tip on the weather from Mum and Dad. Mark Winterbottom from five, Rick Kelly in the Nissan from six. That's row number three. Scotty Pye, position number seven, best of the season. Chaz Mostert, David Reynolds, and Jamie Winkup, who, by the way, next weekend will race in Barbados in the race of champions. He's heading over there with Mick Dew and he'll race against sports car legend and Le Mans winner Tom Christensen, Formula One driver Roman Grosjean, Indy 500 winner and IndyCar star Ryan Hunter, Ray, Kurt Busch from NASCAR, a great variety of drivers. That's a really significant achievement and uh, suggests the weather will probably be a little bit different there next week. So good luck with that one. But here's the rest of the field rolling through. Holdsworth will be alongside Wall. Wood alongside Ingle. These guys are going to have to do it very tough in the early laps because of the sheer volume of water that will be in the air when they arrive in the various braking areas. Marcus Ambrose and Jack Perkins spare a thought for Jack as he heads into his final ride with Charlie Schwerkolt Racing. Further down the order, Michael Caruso and Todd Kelly. Todd was actually excluded from qualifying because they took his car back into the paddock area before it had been cleared by the category technical manager, but they'd already had a brake problem. He was already down the order really it was a slap over the wrist but that's been causing them some problems this weekend they had troubles yesterday his favorite Coulthard one of those that I mentioned before he's working really hard at the moment to try and stitch together his best championship result of his V8 supercar career Rick Kelly something of a veteran now still a young bloke but as we talked earlier nice job in year two development for the Nissan Altima and yesterday a big milestone for Rick his 400 V8 supercar start James Courtney David Reynolds on the podium yesterday for the first time since the Gold Coast last year. Davey's off to the States for a little breather next week. And I'll be very nervous, Neil, because the rain that came down yesterday, Garth Tander made the point that it was just, it just bucketed down. They, and they, they drove around very slowly in reality. This is a proper wet start to this race. And this will be unbelievably slippery. This changes the range of the cars in terms of how much their fuel will deliver them in laps. And we'll keep a very close eye whether or not any form of dry groove arrives. Once they get to somewhere in the order of about 1 minute and 37 thereabouts, it'll be time to contemplate getting back onto a dry tyre if, in fact, it holds off for long enough. I think what we're going to see this afternoon is just this weather pulsing through, and it'll be a question of who can guess right at the best time, because there is going to be a degree of guessing in this process, no doubt. Just look at all those painted lines. You can touch the painted lines, especially there. You just see Ben Gisberg have got those white zebra stripes on the right-hand side. It's just so slippery. It's unbelievable. Lucker. Just watching Richard Holloway, Scotty McLaughlin's engineer. He's going to talk him up. Now, I don't have to tell you how slippery this is out here. I was just out there then and I scraped my foot across it. It is particularly slippery surface. So typically when these guys start, and it's also downhill, they would hold an RPM percentage, a throttle percentage, sorry, and, the, and it'll be on the limiter at 7,500. But you won't be able to do this here. This will be one of those ones where you're going to have to do a supermarket start, we call it. Like in the shopping centre. Very easy on the throttle, very easy on the throttle. Get into second gear early, get into third gear earlier. This will be a tough one, and so much of it will be about the start. And as you were talking, Larko, Chaz Mostert slipped that car around, and he's now just scuttled into position eight after a fright prior to the start. We're just about set for our final race of 2014, the Sydney NRMA 500. The all clear's been given. It's a wet track. There's a battle for the runner-up position in the championship to resolve. It's been a huge year of racing and we're set for a blinder at the conclusion. And a nice start by Tandering. He walked the whole racing team car off the line without wheel spin. Look at Wincup coming down the inside. McLaughlin's gone protective down the left. Van Gisbergen to third. Rick Kelly a nice job. And sideline to the right is Mark Winterbottom. He's got some damage, he'll drop to the rear. It's a repeat for him of what happened yesterday. He's grabbed reverse, he's up and away. It's Tanda, McLaughlin, look at the gears. Down the inside, he's on the white line. This has got the potential for contact. Scotty goes straight through, so does Shane. They resolve it without scratching each car. That was awkward. And how slippery are those white lines? 
Scott McLaughlin got wheel spin off the white line at the start, which really hurt him. Great start for Garth Tander. And then that contact at turn one, Winterbottom. Remember, he's battling for second in the championship. We'll have to see whether that car is okay as Van Gisbergen has been the wet weather master. And he has a dive. This is a bad spot at turn eight. That's very close to making contact with McLaughlin. It's a high risk location in perfect conditions, let alone these, but he was strong there last year. If you recall the racing here last year, that was a location where Van Gisbergen made passes stick. You don't see it too often. Look at Wind Cup on the inside of Courtney. Down the inside, cleanly through, turn nine, job done, Wind Cup. That's one spot. It is Tanda. McLaughlin under assault. They all have their own approach in terms of tyre pressures with the wet tyre on this opening lap with cold tyres, with cold brakes. Courtney searches on the inside. The spray plume isn't too bad. But as you get further down the field, it'll still be a tough deal. Tanda's got control at the end of lap one. It's 74 laps. And already Garth's got 1.4 seconds as a margin over Scotty McLaughlin, who's under threat. Down here, this concrete section in the centre is really slippery. They negotiate their way across those varying surfaces. Good job, Rick Kelly. Up two spots off the grid. James Moffat looking racy there as well. In fact, Rick looks as though he could have a little more speed than either of these guys in front. I suggest at the moment McLaughlin's having a battle. He's really scratching to hold Shane here at the moment. That's the second mistake in consecutive laps of turn two. He can't get away with too much of that. There's a bit of gamesmanship in that. He actually got a gain out of that. He looked like he was struggling to stop. And then he just left the wheel straight, ran it straight across the curb and ended up coming out of that complex much straighter. Van Gisbergen is red hot here. He'll get up the inside into turn eight. Good move. So McLaughlin looking a bit vulnerable. That car not as settled as he'd like it in these conditions. Shane Van Gisbergen, that's the rear bumper of the VIP Holden. This is turn nine. And here's Courtney. He's battling hard at the moment with Wing Cup. That's a reversal. We saw Wind down. Cup down the yep. inside. Down the ball. inside. Nice job. And uh, Jamie's going to get him again as a return of serve. This is great stuff. And there's a bit of trouble up the back there. Was that James Moffat having a little stoush with Fabian Coulton? I think it was. And it's Jason Bright in behind, then Nick Perkat. So James is blazing nicely here as well at the moment. And. Uh, Fabian's reporting, so I just heard him complain about something with the car. I think he said something relating to brakes. I'll get a confirmation on that for you. Now, McLaughlin's gone for a left-hand protection run down the inside to turn one again, so I think that Rick Kelly's half a chance to grab him here as well. For the last several laps, McLaughlin has had to climb straight through the curbing here at turn two. That's his team boss, Gary Rogers. Let's see what he does this time. He gets it pulled up. That's what he needed to be able to do. He doesn't need to keep hanging it over the top of the curbs there, or a race controller will give him a bad sportsmanship flag, or he runs the risk of damaging the underbody of the car. Van Gisbergen's taken some ground off Tanda's lead there too, Neil. So after he got clear with McLaughlin, he's moved up. He's only three car lengths behind Garth Tanda. There you go. 0.8 of a second is the gap, and closing. This is very, very slippery. There's a new painted section. If you have a look right now, there's a red bus lane sign that has, that's gone in from last year. So that exit of turn eight's already quite wild as now Van Gisbergen arrives down the inside at the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue and gets that move done on Garth Tander. Good job. Van Gisbergen, fastest lap of the race, move for the lead. And he looks racy. Nice and smooth now, nice and smooth. But they're all beginning to just tighten up in this bunch. Tanda's still working on him, looking left and right. Turn 12. And they're actually entering a phase at the moment where they'll need to begin to protect these wets. See that dry appearing? They'll need to search for every last little bit of wet to try and extend the life of the wets. And we're just doing the numbers. But if I know we can't say it after four laps at 74, but if Van Gisbergen stays at this spot, Winterbottom stays where he is, Van Gisbergen 
will climb over Mark Winterbottom for second in the championship. So this is a real battle for Mark Winterbottom to come back through the field after the turn one problem. Race control is also monitoring something loose on car nine. Here's the Gillette replay of the start. So nice job there for Tanda. He got a start like Jamie Wincup got yesterday in the dry. Too much wheel spin, you can hear the chatter there in the Volvo. Second gear was clean, the shift to second to third was nice. And then it's a question of trying to position the car so that you don't end up grabbing these lines. So see what Scott does, he feeds into the middle of the lane there and then he sits up on the line for a moment. But he did hold his spot. And uh, Tim Slade is also a bit animated on the radio at the moment. Here's the angle from above. And you can just see the Volvo sitting there momentarily. And it only takes a second or two to lose that little bit of advantage. And that was enough for Garth to be able to choose where he wanted to be. I think you find also that the right-hand wheels were on the, white, on the white line. So when he got a little bit of wheel spin, it just snuck a little bit sideways. And that actually picked up more wheel spin. Here we go. This is turn eight at the top of the hill. Craig Lowndes running wide there on your Mac 3 replay. And we're starting to see some guys with slick tyres out. So that's why I heard Slade on the radio. So he was confirming that he's coming in. So they're taking a bit of a gamble for car 47, Super Cheap Auto Racing. Tim's 15th at the moment. And they're contemplating getting on a slick. If they do that, those next couple of laps for him will need to be very, very gentle. I thought they were roaded, those tyres that they're going to put on, which is actually the smart thing to do. You can't put a glossy new tyre on in these conditions. And Gisbergen is the leader. He's got just over two seconds. Slade is in. Then it is Tander. Then McLaughlin. Then Kelly. Wincup, Courtney, Mostert, Moffat, Perkat, and Coulthard. sun is shining but the track's still wet in part at the moment and already several drivers in the field have reacted crews have brought them in and put slick tires on there i suggested a few laps ago that we think the crossover is in the order of about one minute 37 one minute 38 and that lap van gisbergen did a 37 too and you can see another batch of cars coming in now jumping off so our numbers were about right 
and Van Gisbergen stretching it another lap, which will work okay. So anyone I reckon picks right now or the next lap will be in reasonable shape. Those that reacted early will probably find it was hard work for the first couple of laps on the slick tyre. But fuel strategy-wise, it plays to one of the strategies that Mark Larkin talked about earlier, of getting that fuel dump. They've got to dump 140 litres this afternoon. Looking at the weather radar, I wouldn't put those wets too far away. No. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, well done. Good job. So they've been battling since the start, these two guys. Here's Courtney coming down, who already made the change. Tanda in front from Wink Up. There's Courtney right up in behind. Now, Courtney was having a real battle in that early period there with Jamie Wink Up. So this is an interesting time, isn't it, with people, different tyres, different tyre temperatures, Tanda, Courtney, then Mostert, then Winkup. Jamie just trying to settle in on cold tyres here. So Van Gisbergen stayed out, here he is. One suggests that he'd come in this time, he does. So he's hung out for the additional lap, and that might have also hurt those wets. And Scott McLaughlin was actually held up in pit lane on his exit by the Scott Pie car and a Jack Daniels car, so he lost probably two to three seconds exiting pit lane. Thanks, Rihanna. So, Van Gisbergen and Moffat. Moffat stayed out as well. His shame. Now, we'll see where he pops out okay. relative to Tanda, Courtney, Mostert and Wink Cup. All right, we're right this side, Roddy. So when you drop, you'll be good to go. All clear. Very All clear. wet and slippery pit lane there on a slick tyre. You've got to be super careful. Fuel is the thing they're waiting for. 40 kilometres an hour until the control line at the end, and then there's a blend line that's got to be carefully respected at this racetrack. He made good time, Neil. He did. That's a big gap. Okay, so the answer to the question was the wets worked pretty well on that last lap as well, but by the time he gets those tyres up to speed now, they will be on him. So it was six of one, half a dozen of the other, but isn't this an interesting battle now? So Shane's going to have to be forced into hustling on a cold tyre here with enough patchy wet around to make you nervous. This will test him. He's weaving, trying to make temp. He's got Tanda fully focused on the rear wing of the Holden. So Shane is really picking it up here, trying to tr get these tyre pressures up, get the tyre temps up, but at the same time not overreach on a tyre that isn't ready. Everybody using huge amounts of kerb in there at that bus stop area up to turn eight. Ben Gisberg has done a pretty good job in this opening lap. As well, those tyres, because he, I thought he was going to give that spot away to Tanda based on Garth having warm tyres at the end of turn one. We're never 100% sure of their starting pressures, but the rules mandate they must be no less than 17 pounds per square inch, 17 psi. So for the next half a lap or more, they'll still be getting up in temp and pressure to a normal pressure area, which would be somewhere in the vicinity of 30, 31 pounds, maybe 32 pounds. So as the lap progresses, up comes the temp, up to around about an ideal operating temperature for the tyre of around 90 degrees. Remember, water boils at 100, so they're pretty hot, they're pretty sticky, but you're extremely vulnerable in that first lap or two. So for him to keep his elbows high and to keep this angry pack at bay for that last three and a half kilometres has been a pretty fair job. And you heard Mark Larkham talk about the sway bar settings and the brake bias. So the guys now, as they go onto these tyres, you've got to bring the bars up, you can stiffen the cars, and you can also bring the, the front brake bias, or the brake bias itself, to the front, so that the front does more work. We're going to stay on board for a full lap. We're on board with the six-time champion, Jamie Winkup.
yesterday, just watching uh, where Tim Slade's moved up to what about eight there. Now, I don't have a grid shirt, I don't see where he started. I think it was back probably 12th or 13th or whatever, but I've got to say, I reckon he actually timed that pretty well. I was like you, Neil, I thought a little brave, but uh, I was watching his splits when he went out, and he was on the money pretty quickly. And the other advantage, as you know, is uh, he's already up to speed, so as others transit the pit lane, go out onto the circuit, he's banging out lap times. Well done, Tim. And if you're a smart team, and there's plenty of them here, they would have analysed very closely the conditions and when he timed that. Also just intercepted a message from Race Control that they're monitoring what they think is a jack. One of the air jacks stuck down on Tim's car. So we'll try and get a shot of that for you. I agree, Larko. He actually started 16th, so that was a... We thought it was a bit of a pioneering move going onto those tyres that early, but it hasn't hurt him. The guy that did get hurt, as Rihanna reported, was Scott McLaughlin there, and that has put him back. He was in the battle in front. He was up with Ben Gisbergen and Rick Kelly. I'll just have a look now at what Neil's talking about. Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah there it is. it's uh, left rear. Well, so uh, well spotted by one of the quarter marshals. So uh, race director Tim Schenken... Uh, just mentioned that on the race management channel. So that happens when you pound over the curbs here. So they're uh, part of the onboard jacking system in the car. There are four legs in the car. They couple them up to those G-size nitrogen bottles through a regulator. And once they couple up to the car, they push it up into the air. And uh, one of those, uh, they have some damage and uh, is just partially stuck down. Whether they'll react to that or not, I'm not sure, Rihanna. Yeah, frantic work in the Norton Hornet garage. Marco Caruso, he's had a water pump failure in the uh, in the engine. And uh, he's actually in the battle for the top 10 position. So they need to get him back out on track as soon as possible. Yeah, thanks for that. So uh, problems there for Nissan. They had some brake problems earlier. And also just heard Tim Schenken mention that for the time being, they're just going to monitor that jack, which sort of suggests to me that they're reasonably satisfied at the moment. V8 supercar officials will be watching. And I also intercepted another message that... Uh, comes up on my radio still as car four but he's 300 this weekend so lee holdsworth was reporting something and they just said in look it's your call if it's unsafe bring it in so whatever is disturbing him we'll keep an eye on as well also just to throw into the mix here it is getting darker we're going to prepare for a break is there more weather on the way question mark shane van gisbergen's got a one and a half second lead
Back at Sydney Olympic Park, we're looking at the Coates High Commodore Car Triple Two. It's been driven by Nick Perkat, Walkinshaw Racing entry. And Nick's in 11th place at the moment. He stepped in for James Courtney here last year when James was injured. This is the guy that partnered Garth Tan of that Bathurst victory, and he's put in some very strong drives so far this year. One of them got him on the podium with Oliver Gavin at Mount Panorama, and he did a terrific job also just down the road from here at Sydney Motorsport Park at Eastern Creek. Neil Scaife, an old mate of ours, I wanted to grab a word with, who's uh, pulling up stumps uh, after many years, mate. You've been around, you've given it all, you've given a lot of sport, helped a lot of young blokes. Um, you're departing, and we thank you for everything. It's been quite a ride, James Rosenberg, hasn't it? Oh, thanks very much, Larko. It has been. Um, I've had a fantastic era. Um, started off with kids like Mark Paul and um, Slady and Burkett, plus many uh, Formula 3 kids. But the time now is to pull up stumps. Um, it's absolutely disappointing that Nick Perkett may not have a drive next year. Um, the kids, the kids are champion, and uh, that uh, really disappoints me. But that's life, and he'll he will fight to fight another day. Well, I can tell you, you've done your bit, James, and we thank you very much for it. And I concur with you. Him and Scotty Pye, they need to be around. Well done. Okay. Thanks very much. Yeah, James, a lovely man, and. Uh... He's invested millions of dollars in motorsport over the years. Dates back to when Mark Scape and I were in Formula Holden. He helped Mark Poole, as you heard James say a minute ago, and many of the V8 drivers, Tim Slade, Nick Perkett, many others along the way. And without those sorts of people that believe in the sport and believe in the young guys in the sport, we wouldn't see the superstars grow to what they are today. So uh, sad to see you go, James, but we thank you for all your investment and help along the way. And there's product of uh, his investment there, Nick Perkat, as I said before, doing very, very well, and he's having a really healthy battle at the moment with Fabian Coulthard, so Fabian's just been shadowing him, sitting in 11th and 12th at the moment, those couple of guys, there's uh, uh, Will Davison, who I understand is reporting some issues as well, Jack Perkins, car number 18, he's got a bit of a battle going on here with Craig Lowndes, and uh, I've just... As I'm speaking, listening to Tim Schenken is saying that he thinks, based on the information he's getting from his corner marshals, that the jack on Tim Slade's car is protruding further now and it's actually striking the curbs at various locations. And they won't like that as a notion because it'll break the curbs, which then creates more track structural issues. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that and uh, that may ultimately end up in having to be brought in and rectified, which is a terrible shame because at the moment, Tim's rolling along very nicely. He's uh, currently an eighth behind McLaughlin in front of Bright. In fact, McLaughlin just said a minute ago, there's Frank Adamson talking to Matt Nilsson from Walkinshaw Racing. Uh, Justin Burns on the left. Matty's saying, well, you know, what can we do? Frank's saying, well, bring it, in. bring it in and sort it. So now Adrian's in the game, managing director of Walkinshaw Racing. And it would be it's one of those things that the competitors are going to want to leave the car out there and officials are ultimately going to try and protect the racetrack. But we'll see. For the moment, nothing's been done, but it's a monitoring situation, but it sounds like it got a fraction worse. And I was about to make mention of the fact that McLaughlin's talking about the fact that he thinks that it's going to rain. It's so much darker. And there it is. The left rear is hanging very low now, and you can easily see why it's striking those curbs. In fact, I can't believe it's still there. Yeah, we thought it snapped it off by now. It's gained eight positions, Tim Slade. Started 16th, currently eighth in the field. Shed Van Gisbergen leading from Garth Tander. James Courtney, Mostert, Winkup, Kelly, McLaughlin, Slade, Bright, Davison. That's your top ten, the Sydney NRMA 500. Stay with us.
That's the view around Sydney Olympic Park at the moment. And the view in the bottom left-hand corner across Sydney's beaches is far different to what we've got here at the track. We've had a downpouring of rain. We've heard of hail falling on the northern beaches of Sydney. And we expect more tricky weather to come here at Sydney Olympic Park. Now, a lot of people are following very closely Marcus Ambrose. It's been a good day for Marcus so far. He started 23rd, car number 66 is now into 16th. Marcus has jumped up seven places and going well, Scapey. He's driving very well. These, the race miles will serve him well in terms of not just preparing for 2015, but just getting a flow, getting a bit of understanding. And you were talking to him, Neil, also about making some changes to the car to get him to acclimatise a little quicker and be more comfortable. Yeah, some good news for the moment at Tim Slope. Just had a chat with Frank Adamson, who uh, up and down this pit lane looks after all the technical stuff. He's happy at the moment that that's not going to do any damage to the kerbs, Neil, as you said. And you can see in shots here, uh, Burnsy, Packer Burns, as we know him, he's debriefing the team. This is good team stuff. They just won't bring a car in and start thinking about how they're going to fix it. They will have a plan, a very accurate plan, of how to attack that, because that won't be a two-minute job. If he has to come in and change it, he's out of competition for the day, I can tell you. That's right. It's not just a quick fix and send it because they've still got pit stops to do and they've got to have the jacking system working. It was interesting in the onboard shot of Marcus there before, he's got a tinted rain visor on at the moment just to try and brighten the view from the driver's eye point of view. So, and he's got the visor down at the moment. So, shall let replay here of a bit of a wild ride for Chas Mostert. He and uh, Jamie Wincup are continuing to battle. In fact, they've swapped spots. And here's White. Just been chipping away at it, hasn't he, Jamie Wincup, in the last several laps. Fastest man, Shane Van Gisbergen. He's just further improved to a 1 minute 29.2. It does show what track position really is worth around a place like this, Neil, because most that must have been holding him up because the gap from Van Gisbergen and Tanner Courtney, they've got away from those two. They were all line astern a little while ago. And now Winkup had to make a move on Mostert because he was clearly holding him back. And he'll now, again, put some of those Winkup-esque laps together and try to get back into, you can see those lap times there, 29-2 versus Winkup. So he's a long way behind Van Gisbergen in terms of lap speed based on the fastest laps so far. So he'll need to put some of those Great laps together to the gap is 7.6 seconds to Van Gisbergen for Wink Cup. Now, Rihanna explained a little earlier that McLaughlin was held in the pits during his stop and lost, I think she said it was about three or four seconds. But when you look at where he is, is relative to Shane Van Gisbergen at the moment, he's actually 16 seconds behind. So his qualifying speed hasn't really translated to race speed this afternoon. So I wonder whether the changes they made that made it very strong for Quali haven't quite worked out for them in the race. He was very impressed with the car in the second race yesterday. Maybe he hasn't quite got the firepower at the moment. That's always a bit tyre dependent, depending on how they're managing their 20 Dunlop hard tyres through the race weekend. They start with 24 on Friday, but they hand four tyres back. And uh, also a little bit dependent on who you're racing and what the traffic fumble is at the time. Rick Kelly, incidentally, has just done his personal best lap time, a 1 minute 29.9. .9. That's only 0.7 slower than the fastest lap of the race so far, Shane Van Gisbergen. That gives you a bit of a peep out towards the southwest and the western area of Sydney, out towards the Blue Mountains. And uh, it continues just to get a little darker around this precinct at the moment. It will depend precisely on which postcode you happen to be standing in as to whether you're wet or dry in and around the Sydney Basin at the moment. And we've got to keep this second in the championship chat going because Mark Winterbottom's currently 20th, Van Gisbergen is currently leading. If they finish where they are right now, Van Gisbergen finishes second in the championship by 18 points. So Winterbottom needs to come forward. He's got Dale Wood, Todd Kelly, Russell Engel, Marcus Ambrose, James Moffat just in front. Jeremy, uh, sorry to interrupt there, mate. Uh, any feedback from Craig? I mean, he's, he's usually good in these tough conditions, but he's hurting, isn't he, mate? I can tell. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just uh, his body's not uh, up to the task. He's a bit sore from last night. He's probably got some broken ribs, so, yeah, just got to keep on going. I think he's probably just uh, staying out there, hoping for the rain to come down and, and uh, making this life a bit easier in the car, but, yeah, he's suffering. He's got a bit of fight in him. Well done, mate. All right. There has been so much excitement this weekend surrounding Marcus Ambrose and we are here in pit lane with the president of Penske Racing, Tim Sindrick. Tim, 
as I said, so much anticipation and excitement about Marcus Ambrose. And he is currently sitting in 16th position. It has been a tough weekend, but great spot at the moment in this race. Yeah, without a doubt. He's continued to progress as the weekend's gone on. And um, we didn't really know what to expect before he came here. And to and come here with the whole Xbox presentation and, and the pressure that he's had all week has been a really testament to this team and uh, really where it can go. But we've got a little work to do. And your, your thoughts on this, this race here this weekend at Sydney Olympic Park? It's such a brutal circuit for, for Marcus to come home to. And the circuit combined with the, con the conditions has really given him a lot to think about, I think, in the off-season. But uh, to come here as a wild card and to be able to do that before we actually go into competition next year, I think it's been a great opportunity for our group. And uh, you know, to work hand-in-hand -hand with the Dick Johnson team has, has been something that uh, you know, I think is going to really get us prepared for next year. And I think Ambrose has, has really handled it well. He's a true professional. Thanks so much for your time. We're very much looking forward to having you on the grid in 2015. Thank you. We're looking forward to being here. Thank you. Tim Sendrick there, President of Penske Racing, done a remarkable job of bringing together their NASCAR and their IndyCar operations under one big roof in Mooresville, North Carolina. Have a look at their results if you get a chance online sometime. It's an amazing story. Sydney Olympic Park is the location today to wrap up the V8 Supercars Championship for 2014. It's race 38 after a busy, busy championship season. ANZ Stadium, Orphones Arena, and this amazing Olympic precinct built for the year 2000, Sydney Olympics. And right now, lap 23 of 74 complete in this weather interrupted grand finale. 250 kilometres. Shane Van Gisbergen's got the lead by 3.6 seconds. Expectation is that there's another rain cell on the way. Shane Van Gisbergen is looking super strong at the moment. This man on screen, well, he had the pole, but he got too much wheel spin, and then he was held up in the pit lane. So he's trying to recover. He's seventh at the moment. Let's enjoy a lap on board with the young Kiwi.
whilst we've been on board with Scott McLaughlin, Jamie Winkups to stunt his fastest slap of the race at 29.3, only one tenth of a second away from Van Gisberg and the leader of the race in terms of ultimate pace. Garth Tander has done a 29.24. So those three guys are exchanging fastest laps. And on that lap there, as you can see, big gain there. Dahlgren can't get into the pit here. Yeah, that's hard for him, isn't it? So, uh, and that's actually, uh, he's violated a rule in doing that, but I don't think he had any option. He just had to drive over that line to get back in. And uh, I saw a few, too. well, all four off the deck there for Marcus. They changed the brake master cylinder in that car for Marcus overnight to give him more pedal feel and the brakes. I reckon it's helped him today. Just look where he sits in the field at the moment and his general lap speed compared to yesterday. A little bit of that will just be the sleeping on it factor going away, processing it, thinking about it, and the other part of it will be what they've actually done in the tuning of the car more to his liking. Another little remark also, that when we enjoyed that lap with Scotty McLaughlin, there were one or two shots that I saw outside the car that just suggested a tiny telltale of smoke here and there, so we'll monitor that for you. Yeah, I picked that up too. It's also had a very long brake pedal on Scott's car there, and you could see he was tapping it a lot with a left foot to get his pedal up, so what you were saying about Marcus Ambrose, when you want a longer pedal meaning more feel you put smaller master cylinders in which that means that you have a longer travel so you don't want a long pedal at this place because it's very hard on brakes like one guy i've been keen to have a chat to i don't know if i picked this one i don't know if i've picked the right place to have the chat charlie as we look at your gel wind car on there mate um lee holdsworth next year into your team fantastic i spoke to him at phillip island and was going to congratulate him for driving a ford May not be the case. What can you tell us? Oh, I'm not sure about that one, mate. Oh, really? I really don't know. No, looking at all our options at the moment, Larko, it's all good. And uh, just watch your check then, and he's doing a good job. So, yeah. Can I say, uh, mate, it's, whatever the outcome, you must be really pleased that Charlie Swarkholt's going to be hanging around the pit lane again. We actually like you, Rick. I'll be here next year for sure. Can't wait. Can't wait to get Lee on board. Uh, Jack's done a great job, but uh, uh, looking forward to seeing Jack again soon, too, maybe. Charlie's hopeful that he can try and retain Jack as an endurance driver for next year and it is good that he'll stay with us next year. Lee Holdsworth will be in the car, whatever it may be. And we stopped his heart there for a moment when we were watching that battle with Lowndes over at Turn 8. This is David Reynolds having a very good battle at the moment for 11th with Nick Perkat and Nick just drags her on the wall. Look at that skyline. We'll come back to Sydney in a moment.
There won't be a single engineer or strategist in the pit lane at the moment that's not staring at this Bureau of Meteorology radar because that's really the story now as to how you plan your strategy. And then it's got to be in combination with looking outside, which often you can be trapped just looking at computer data and not actually looking out the window. That's happened once or twice in this game. So they're all at the moment trying to figure out how far their cars will run on the balance of fuel they've got. Remember that they, they get extra range by running slower in the early part of the race because it was wet. On our numbers, they can get into the early 40s in terms of laps at the moment. We're on lap 29. Now, how the fuel works out here versus what tyre you need to be on is going to be the story that we focus on because one thing's for sure, it very rarely plays to your convenience. Yeah, and it is going to be difficult, Neil. You just used the word plan your strategy, and it is very hard to plan your strategy at the moment. If you get a sense, I know you're looking at the radar, but when you look up in the sky, I reckon that's just a little bit too far away, although it's absolutely coming our direction to arrive here before our next round of pit stops. So I think we're going to see two more rounds of pit stops and that's going to get very complicated. Yeah, and on that, my numbers at the moment, Larko, I reckon that's about 18 minutes away, thereabouts, is when they're about due to run out of fuel. So I need you to just wet your finger, stick it up in the air, give me a bit of a read on the velocity of the breeze and tell me precisely when it's going to arrive. And if you get it wrong, I'll get Australia to come after you. Hey, Scafie, how predictable is Neil? I say, I reckon it's coming over, you know, pretty soon. He says, oh, I'm in 18 minutes like yeah, that. Yeah. Seriously, right on cue. No, 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 not the weather, the fuel you goose. So they're going to end up needing fuel in about 18 minutes from now. But I want you to tell me when the weather's going to get here. Don't put the pressure on me. You're standing out there. Greg Inglis from the South Sydney Rabbitohs, NRL Premiers, just watching on, enjoying the racing here. Great to have him in the garage. And of course, we are at Sydney Olympic Park, home of the NRL Premiership, and of course, State of Origin's played here. World Cup Rugby's been here, and most famously, the Sydney 2000 Olympics. So we're in prestigious company this weekend for the Sydney NRMA 500. And we're on board with Mark Winterbottom. As I said before, he's 20th. Dale Woods in front of him. He's made ground on Dale. But he will be energised by this, meaning the battle for second in the championship is on. Van Gisbergen's leading. Winterbottom's 20th. He's got some pretty heavy-duty guys in front of Dale Wood with Todd Kelly, Russell Ingle, Marcus Ambrose, James Moffat. So as he tries to surge his way forward for the factory team for Ford, he will need to make sure that he gets to about 14th. That's probably the number at the moment based on Van Gisbergen's position. But remember, there's so much to play out. Lap 30 of 74. As Neil's been describing, the fuel stop not that far away. Weather is coming. And Mark Winterbottom has made Real ground on Dale Wood. He might get down the inside here. It's a very front. Oh, very close. It's a bumpy braking area. He wasn't up far enough. That was very close to making contact there with the back of Dale's Commodore. Keeping a bit of an eye on this battle at Club Dub. Jamie, where is he? He's eight and a half seconds away from the lead of the race, but he's really got a good battle going with James Courtney. So really the top four are well in this at the moment, Van Gisbergen, Tander, Courtney and Wincup. There's our leader, here are the margins. Shane Van Gisbergen's gone through frame, now Garth Tander. Then a gap back to James Courtney and this little battle just keeps opening and closing all the time. So remember that Wincup's ingesting all the hot air from behind James's car. Huge brake temperatures, it's feeding into Jamie's brakes and into his water temperatures as well. And now Winterbottom, who's had a lunge at Wood, hasn't worked for him. He's not having a good weekend, is he? And so the further implication here for the runner-up position in the championship. So the fellow that he's racing is actually leading the race, Shane Van Gisbergen. Mind you, he's had great momentum in the recent races, so very much had the feeling that he'd be a big chance to be the runner-up. And Craig Lowndes, the other guy that he's racing, is out there at the moment with damaged oh. ribs. And that's actually a big, big moment for Mark Winterbottom. It's hooked up over the top of the kerb. And actually, it's launched off the top of it when the wheels were disconnected and just picked up the fence. And straight ahead then at the next corner, that's the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue. Look at all the damage on the right-hand side of the Pepsi Max Falcon. So the damage was incurred coming out of Turn 8 at the top of Dawn Fraser Avenue, and then he couldn't pick up where the other car was as he turned in there. 
We'll see Tim Edwards looking on. He'll be angry with himself over that. And uh, looks like the steering wheel is right hand down yeah. there now on Mark Winterbottom's car. So a little bit of steering damage to contend with Rihanna. Unfortunately, it's Robert's last race in V8 Supercars and he finds himself in the garage. Just, Robert, just explain to us what happened. Uh, just uh, try to push and, and close the gap in front and, and somebody hit, uh, was a little bit more wet, uh, wet on the on the next lap when I came there to, to the right hand and just understeered into the wall unfortunately yeah uh, so it's uh, really unfortunate way to finish your career in V8 supercars Robert yeah absolutely the, the career is not over yet though you never know if we're coming back we hope you do someday and we wish you all the best back home in Sweden thank you so much appreciate it that's right, and if you recall the first year for Alex Premer also when he was with Gary Rogers, that was a tough year for the Frenchman, and uh, he subsequently got more mileage, and I thought his run in the Pertec Enduro Cup this year has been pretty strong. So it's, it's an exposure game. You've got to actually spend time in these cars and understand the tracks. There's plenty more to talk about. Join us again in a moment. And it's a lead of just under five seconds for Shane Van Gisbergen. And he's on target to emulate what he did at the end of last year's championship season, which is to win on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. He's been the form driver here in recent years. He came into the round with five podiums from the last seven runs here. He likes this place. He's comfortable with it. He's getting a lot of mileage. I talked about the fact that he ran in the New Zealand Super Tourers last weekend, picked up three wins. It's a very, very strong performance with Simon Evans. Got a bit of drift action going next weekend. Here's Will Davison is doing a good job as well. He's 10th at the moment. In fact, it's pertinent that we pick Will up because when these stops come, by the way, anybody that's more than about 30 seconds off the lead of the race, and uh, that's about where Will is at the moment, give or take, runs a very high risk of going one lap down. And basically everyone's looking at the moment to run the range of these cars all the way down to pretty much empty in between. So they'll have to bring on 30, 32 odd seconds of fuel. They'll need the best part of 110 odd litres, in other words, returning them from empty to full. 
is that going to marry up with the exact moment that they may or may not need wets? And you had some data there also based on where Will qualified. This is a great climb back, Mark. He's had a really good job. He started 17th, so he's got seven positions to be right at the back of the top 10, and he's, he's actually got really good race pace too, Combo. Betty Clemenko, team owner of Erebus Motorsport V8. Betty, you ride the waves of this sport with your heart on this on your sleeve. You've had the win at Winton. You got your very first Erebus Motorsport pole position yesterday with Will Davis. And how would you no, sum just, up season 2014? Oh, it's spots. had its ups and it's had its downs, but I wouldn't change it for the world. We need to go through it. We're a young team. We need to go through the pain to get to the top. And I think we're doing our fair share of it. <laughs> You have some changes happening in the off-season and 2015 is going to look very different for you. Yeah, it's it's going to look very different. Lee's off to another team. We'll have Ash Walsh. Uh, Ross is going. Some other staff members are leaving. But that's what happens with time and uh, it'll be all a new year next year. And you'll be on your own. This, this is your team I now, know, Betty. I know. Ross was standing on the wall and he said, go get them, girl. And I went... I just, I just went, oh my God, I actually got goose pimples. I said, now I really am on my own. No more hugging Ross and getting all my information off Ross. We love having you part of it. And we look forward to you on the grid in 2015. Thanks, Betty. I look forward to being there. Thank you. Yeah, I'll back Betty up. We gave uh, Ross a bit of a farewell yesterday and we are going to miss him. But look, here it is. It's coming right down over behind my shoulder. So it won't be long before that's stopping over on the corner of the raceway. We're on lap 36. Remember I said the critical lap was 38, so we're nearly there. The teams want to get to that, but the other thing, because they should be able to get them in and fill them up, so it would have based on a dry strategy. Now, wet weather. You can see we talked a lot yesterday about the teams not scrubbing the tyres. That's a very waxy green tyre. And I went down the pit lane and had a look everywhere, boys, and everyone's done the same thing. They've left them this way. Now, that is most unusual. The reason they've done it, this is a more environmental wet tyre. It's a different, slightly different compound, if you like. They've found from a performance point of view, they actually will cop the little bit of performance negative from running the wax on the tyre and getting rid of that or taking half a lap to get rid of it versus the drop-off in performance from scrubbing it, heating it, and then rubbing it again or running it again. And while you're talking, Larko, I just heard Chas Mostert saying it's raining over the back of the circuit. You're in the garage at Pepsi Max Ford Performance Racing. Look at that. So very close to this racetrack at the moment. It is genuinely wet. Garth Tander launches here up over the kerb. And uh, so track grip disappearing, rain beginning to tumble. The scenario that everybody's working to is they only want to stop once if they can. They want to put that fuel in, match that critical number that Mark Larkham spoke about to fuel to get home and hopefully whack the tires on that you need to get home. But of course, it may not work that way. You might run out of fuel. So which tyre do you jump onto? How deep is this rain shower? How long will it go for? Could you do it in one or are you going to be compelled to make two stops? Anybody that could get it done in one will have a significant advantage, Larko. Yeah, and all the tyres out on the pit lane. The other really quirky thing, Neil, remember we talked about getting that 140 litres in. Because it was wet for the first part of the race, that fuel usage was less. So it's going to be interesting to see if people started low enough with their initial fuel fill to jam the rest of the fuel in. We'll have a look after this round of pit stops. Yeah, that's a really good point, Larko. There's going to be a lot of strategy play out here now. You can see it's raining in pit lane quite heavily. Russell Engel is sharing this pit boom with the Xbox Falcon. They're running a Holden and Falcon from that dual boom there with Lucas Dumbrell and the DJR Penske guys. It's about the same time as yesterday, maybe just a little bit earlier. So here comes the race leader. He's reacted. I think that's smart. It's risk, yeah, so risk management. Well, Tanda stayed out. Everybody that stayed out longer yesterday invariably paid the price. So Van Gisbergen on to Wentz. So this might work out for him. Surprisingly, the fuel story and the tyre story may marry here. May. So Courtney's taken the option of coming in. Here's Rick Kelly, who's done a great job. Scott McLaughlin right in behind. And there you go. There's Mostert also in behind there, Jack Perkins. So the real question for me is, is everybody getting their total mandate of 140 litres in? Remember, they dumped some early in that stop, but because of... What Larko was talking about, the slow running that I mentioned in the wet early, there's a certain amount of that got dropped. 
Now they're dropping the rest of it. But if they haven't dropped their 140 litres, they'll have to come back in and keep squeezing more in. Over the back of the circuit at the southwest. It's actually dry there at the moment. This is the opposite to years gone by. It was turn five that was the horror story where everybody fired into that outside wall. Here we are on the front straight and it's turning into an ice skating rink. So this will be a mission for Rihanna and Larco to just double check whether all the fuel has been dropped. Our theories up here are not as accurate as actually looking at the sight gauges. And remember I said yesterday, the first thing the driver's got to look for is the sheen, that little bit of shine that comes on the road before it goes to a more damp, dark colour. And as you can see there before, at turn five, if that's dry, there's going to be spots then around the back of Dawn Fraser Avenue. This is going to hurt Wink Up. This is going to hurt Wink Up because you're going to have to double stack. Especially given that Craig was at the back of the pack. Oh, yeah, it's cost him a couple of seconds. They got away with it, basically. But So when you're around the back of the circuit and you come down Dawn Fraser Avenue, that's the zone where it will have started to rain. That it's raining properly. You can see the wind direction, the flags in pit straight. That weather's come in and it's very wet in this zone of the racetrack. And our pictures showed you on the other end of the racetrack. It's only 3.4 kilometres, this place, but it's dry on the other end. For now. Yeah, yeah well, it'll get there. I haven't seen um, Tanda in yet. There's, uh, there's James. So Van Gisbergen we saw come in. We, we, we saw him go onto the wets, but I'm curious as to where Garth Tanda is in the universe. Yeah, and just to confirm, I managed to watch the FPR and the Triple Eight pit stops in, and both of them did get all their fuel in. So this is really now a race of uh, managing risk to relative to this weather. Okay, thanks, Larko. So uh, Tanner did press on, so he's done an extra lap on slicks there. That will have hurt. And from our original call from the time we saw Courtney, it may have well, been he may have, he may have been compelled to, so it may have been a fuel delivery issue. Because the two cars were coming in, you mean? Uh, no, well, they might have needed to burn fuel, or maybe it was a queuing thing, because the double stacking may have hurt him. Anyway, we'll see. They're going to have to put a heap of fuel in. I've actually got his radio channel selected. So we'll clear this up for you when Garth Tander rejoins the circuit itself to see what the relativity was like, because remember, Van Gisbergen was leading from Tander, and then there was a great battle with Winkup and Courtney. At the moment, Winkup has jumped over James Courtney, so that's already a position change. Currently, Garth Tander and Nick Perkett. Here we go, here we go. So that's Van Gisbergen at the top of the hill. Coming down Australia Avenue. The wheel spin for Garth Tander. Here's the proximity of oh. Wallace, car one and two. Have a look at that big moment there in the standing water for Van Gisbergen. You are the leader. You are the leader. And it was sliding. for Van Gisbergen was an extraordinary image of the thing crabbing sideways at high speed down pit straight. But that's worked out quite well for Tander. So he must have made more ground round the back in the drier sections of the track than we thought. We thought, in fact, I made the remark that that will have hurt him. It hasn't. That was wrong, the wrong statement. So Garth Tander and the Holden Racing Team, by extending a lap, have actually claimed position. And now we looked at images before where we talked about the southwestern corner of the track being dry. Well, it's certainly not anymore. Look at that the full shine over there. But what we do have is a fascinating contest between these two guys for the lead of the race. And remember at the beginning, it was Van Gisbergen that was mighty strong in these conditions. And he's got warmer tyres, not by much. And that's an awkward place to pass at turn eight in the wet with low vis. Look at the debris all over the road there. There's the oversteer. Van Gisbergen then lit the throttle up in second gear and it wound itself sideways. He was trying to get a run on Garth Tander. Have a look at the water. This is bordering on safety car time again now because that's very heavy in that zone. When we get to the point of the standing water, the water that either puddles or it starts to run across the road, 
you can't control the car. And we saw Van Gisbergen on the main straight in the previous lap have a massive moment. Here it is. Yeah, check it out. So he's coming down the straight, looking to grab fifth gear. He hits the painted white line and the standing water. It shoots sideways as Garth comes across beyond the blend line to pick up the race line. How they can see is something of a miracle. Everybody's got aquaplaning going on. And look at Van Gisbergen, the thing still floating sideways as he tries to put a move on Tander into one in appalling conditions down here. But he's got to tuck back under the rear wing. They are skating around Sydney Olympic Park at the moment. He's going to have another crack. He's determined at the moment, Van Gisbergen. They are still racing for the lead. The track is green. He's going to duck out. This is Ryan Walkinshaw watching and holding his breath. Tucks back in once more. There's no space down there. Garth is having terrible trouble pulling that car up. He can't touch the throttle until it's straight. The radios are alive with complaining drivers. It's almost impossible to concentrate at the moment. Here we are at five. This is all about running second in the championship, Crompo. He wants to get by because if it was red flagged or suspended like it was yesterday, Van Gisbergen wins and he runs second in the series. So he's trying everything he can to get by Garth Tander. Tander gets down the inside of Wall. Big slide again. How was that? And David Van Gisbergen. Wall did the right thing there, just sidestepping and allowing the leaders to get on with the job. Professional gamesmanship that was. Good to see it. Tim Schenken has a massive amount of water down here. Tanner can't stop, he can't stop. And so just as they called it, Garth is locked up with the amount of water down there. He's recovered it. But that yields position, that's Blake Smith. That may be a costly mistake. Well, that may be a costly mistake. It just depends on how this plays out. Now, outside our window at the moment as John Webb cheers at that outcome. It's tears down the road at the Holden Racing Team, but we're not done. It's just, it'll be a safety car intervention. Garth Tanner was just saying, sorry, boys, sorry. So he knows the implication of that little mistake, and it's the littlest mistake. Please get this in perspective. It's so wild when the water's there through that dip where Garth put his foot on the brake, he was out of control, he basically aquaplane off the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue and he knows now with the safety car out, this is pretty much as wet as it was yesterday. But I hasten to add, it's not over, it's not over. So yeah, he lost track position there, they haven't suspended the race, it's just a better safety car intervention, so for the moment we all just have to lower the heart rate, have a look and think and see what the implications are. Adrian Burgess, I'm sorry to interrupt you at this time. These conditions are torrential and that is just a heartbreaking mistake by Garth Tander. But you can't you can't blame anyone in these conditions. Oh, look, mate, uh, what can we say? I'm, I'm glad it's him out there and not me. you, you, you got to take your hat off to these guys. Yeah, it's gutting in, in one instant, but I wouldn't want to be out there. So like, they all deserve medals, uh, whatever order they finish in. Uh, to be fair, Cheese had the... Had, it was five seconds up the road. We did a good job in the pit lane. And when we stop, fair enough. But... Uh, but it's not over yet, but uh, the main thing is that we don't uh, injure any drivers or marshals or anything like that. So let's see what happens with the safety car, see what the weather does. But it's not it's not over yet, but... Uh, Thank, thanks, Adrian. Cool, thanks. And I think the answer to the question of why they ran Garth longer was just simply You're pace. There was still enough dry track around the back. Look at those conditions out there. It is absolutely appalling. Near impossible to see out of a V8 supercar. The Petters safety cars grabbed them. Van Gisbergen's the leader. And we now have the perfect score. Every race in Sydney that we've ever had, we've had a safety car. When the weather was going to come, we were pretty sure that we were going to have it, whether it was because the weather was too bad or because someone ended up off the road. So Garth Tanner with that small mistake, really easy to make. Just here, have a look at how wet it is. These wet weather tyres do their best to channel away. But standing water is the real concern out there. These guys could drive in the rain, but that's really hard rain, and that's starting to flood in certain parts of the track where they simply don't have control of the cars. They're some of the best drivers you'll see in the country, and they can't even keep them in a straight line. Spare a thought, too, for our cameramen who are here, there, and everywhere around the circuit. 
getting absolutely drenched out there, doing a great job for us, bringing us the pitches from the Sydney NRMA 500. We're under safety car, lap 42. Race order, Shane Van Gisbergen. You might be wondering too, a couple of questions coming through on social media. Was Van Gisbergen allowed to pass Tanner because the safety car had been called? Well, Garth was off the road, so that's okay. Van Gisbergen is permitted to do that, that's no problem. So he's the race leader. Tanner second from Courtney and Winkup. Mostert, Slade, Rick Kelly, McLaughlin, Jason Bright, Will Davis in the top 10. Nick Perk at 11 from Fabian Coulthard. David Reynolds, Todd Kelly, James Moffat, Marcus Ambrose, Craig Lowndes 17th, Lee Holdsworth, Mark Winterbottom 19th, then Russell Ingle and Scott Pye. They are the 21 cars on the lead lap. David Wall there, second in the queue, is 22nd in the race in the lap down. Jack Perkins, who is behind Garth Panda, he's 23rd, then Dar Woods behind him in 24th. Robert Dahlgren with dramas in the Volvo in pit lane, and Michael Caruso with that engine drama earlier on. He has not rejoined. Bad enough for the guys on the track in the cars, but the pit crews too have got to deal with the water that starts to wash in from these storms. Sydney has been getting absolutely belted with rain at about this time of the day every day for a week. Almost on cue. Adrian Burgess, Ryan Walkinshaw, Blake Smith, their engineer for Garth Tander, formerly worked with Shane Van Gisbergen on this car. Helped James Courtney too to win his championship some years back at Dick Johnson Racing. So we're under safety car for the first time in this final race of the championship. We're on lap 43. Let's rejoin Mark Skay for Neil Crompton. And that's a look at the Bureau radar image in and around Sydney at the moment. That's the 120 kilometre or 128 kilometre view around Sydney. And you can see that intensive cell that's just past us at Sydney Olympic Park in the Homebush region there where the pointer is. It doesn't look so bad beyond it, but we'll wait and see. Here's the highlights thus far of our final race of the year. It is like it's a carbon copy of what happened yesterday with a bright, sunny, humid start and then deteriorating to rain early in the game. And we had a period of dry and it's gone back to being absolutely drenching wet here. We've seen some really intensive battles along the way. Required minimum of two stops today to be able to drop the 140 litres minimum mandate of fuel. Big lock-up moment here for Marcus Ambrose, who in general terms so far today has been travelling quite well. Looks like he's a little more comfortable in the car. Saw a problem with the left rear air jack system on Tim Slade's car number 47. Matt Nilsson, Walkinshaw Racing in conversation with Justin Burns and also Frank Adamson about the legalities of that. They left the car out there, thankfully, although... Tim's also reporting the front brakes hurting a bit on that car. He's been in the traffic. Look at this. There's been lightning strikes all around the Sydney Basin, flat out for this past week. And again today, that was Mark Winterbottom. Triggered by a leap off the top of the kerb. And uh, Tim Edwards, no words required there. Grant McPherson, the engineer in the foreground. It's just something's gone out of whack for Mark Winterbottom in the back half of the championship. And Mostert, his teammates, actually rolling quite well here at the moment. A brief stacking and queue up there for the Red Bull Racing teammates and how's Van Gisbergen waving the rear wing to the crowd aquaplaning as he changed gear down the front straight chasing the new leader Garth Tander and he's being informed there by Rob Starr whole racing team and then GT that mistake Blake Smith engineer Ryan Walkinshaw in the background I mean it is so difficult out there in those conditions so the Petters safety cars grab the field slowed everybody down the other side here and we're just waiting and watching to see what happens with this weather. But looking out the commentary box window at the moment, it's horrific out there. John, our web team principal down here at Techno Motor Motorsport. Mate, now, what is really clear, watching the body language of Shane in that car, he's been very aggressive, wants to get to the front. I mean, second in the championship is clearly pretty important for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it uh, sort of came, third came to us a little bit yesterday with the, the bad luck from Craig. And, you know, we didn't think second was quite there, but looking at the way things are going, obviously Mark went off and got stuck in that first lap. It all kind of played into our lap. So, look, it's there. We're not going to throw away third. We're not that silly. But at the same stage, he wants second. There's no holding him back. We've seen him in the wet before. He doesn't mind slipping and sliding, and he'll do it all day today. I reckon that's pretty evident. Good luck. Thank you. Jonathan Weber did a mighty job partnering Shane Van Gisbergen in the Pertec Enduro Cup. Unbelievably wet scenes again at Sydney Olympic Park. A chance to get a breakaway. We'll be back in a moment. So very much in a holding pattern right now on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. Scott McLaughlin, position eight. You just hear the way that, that Volvo is lighting up in a wheel spin in these wet conditions. Safety car on the track for the first time in this race. McLaughlin 
was the pole sitter. The play with the pit stop earlier on, and he's back to position number eight. As we roll around and the rain continues to tumble on down. A lot of standing water. Boys at Holden Racing Team have got the bags packed. They're ready to go home. Probably a little bit early for that anyway, but they're rugged up and watching on and waiting out to see what this rainstorm does and we get back to green flag running pretty soon, but it's still teeming down. Lots of standing water around this temporary street circuit, lightning off in the distance. You might have just seen a flash there. Visibility is bad. And the race has been slow right down. On lap 44 of a scheduled 74, remember there's a time certain finish of this race. One lap after 5.41 p.m. local time. We're at 4.58 as it is, so there's still some time left on the clock. But that gives you an idea of just how bad it is. And look how much of that water is sitting up on the surface. Street track, difficult for it to drain anywhere. That's what creates a lot of the issues. And at this rate, if this rain stays like this, there won't be a green flag flying anytime soon, but at least we're clocking off the laps behind the safety car, so that was even more crucial for Shane Van Gisbergen to get past when Garth Tander made that small, so, uh, small slip up and ran off the road down at turn nine. I saw yesterday the conditions get so bad that the race was put behind safety car, then suspended under the red flag, restarted and finished under safety car, never went back to green flag conditions, so Cars rolling around here, something of a pause pattern for this final race of the championship with Shane Van Gisbergen as the leader. We just have to wait it out and hope that that rain slows up a bit and the track starts to dry out a little or at least can drain and get some green flag running back underway. All right, here's the situation at Sydney Olympic Park for the Sydney NRMA 500. The field is lined up behind the safety car at the moment. We have 29 laps still to race. And the rain here is bucketing down as it did yesterday. We're in the middle of a horrific storm at the moment. And the cameras don't really do justice to the amount of water that is coming down at the moment. And it is pooling down and causing drama. Red flags now. Yeah, just here. Race management channel, Tim Schenken has just instructed uh, a suspension of the race from Cam's race control because just as we went to the break, it got darker again. And look at that. I mean, it's just impossible to drive a car around here. Every single driver's been on the radio saying, I can't. What, Shane Van Gisbergen actually suggested a moment ago they needed to slow the safety car down because he couldn't keep up with it. It was so bad. And remember that this race is time certain as always, and it was scheduled to be completed at the 74th lap or at 41 minutes past the hour local time. And that's the scene there in the garage at the moment. Larko, it's pretty evil out there. It is, mate, and I was standing in uh, Shane Van Gisbergen's garage when that call came through because obviously on the safety car, got the nice little skinny tyres that cut through the water, but much harder on those big, fat, wide tyres you see on the V8 supercars, and uh, that's pretty dangerous when you're aquaplaning at 100k an hour, and that would have absolutely driven Tim Schenken's decision. Again, well done from the CAMS race control. Scott McLaughlin, who was our pole sitter, he hasn't had the best of runs this afternoon. He was held up in the lane in the first stop, and uh, he can. the reason he's doing that is he can see himself in the big screens around the track. You catch a glimpse of yourself as you drive around and uh, at Bathurst for example it often gives you an indication of who you're racing and where they are and, and what's going on so uh, very sociable thank you Scotty and I hope you're having a nice afternoon I reckon we're having a better one not being in the car but uh, it's been a good run for him generally in 2014 you've got to applaud performance for him so into the lane they go race suspended not stopped so they will be given an all clear ultimately to be able to work on the car no refueling, and then we'll wait and watch, see what the track condition looks like. Because we've passed more than 50% of the race distance, it can be declared and four points can be awarded. So I just ducked outside. Now, that was raining as heavily as yesterday. That's, that's absolutely hosing down. What happened, folks, was there was thunder and lightning, and he ducked under the desk. I had to drag him out. Come on, mate. It'll be all right. It's just a little bit of thunder. I get scared. <laughs> so 
what happens here now is there's a lot of frantic work to make sure that they can make some quick adjustments if need be. They can actually turn them to genuinely wet cars now, which they may not have been game to do at the start of the race. And uh, what that means is you might make some shock absorber adjustments in both directions, the bump and the rebound. You might have a fiddle with tyre pressures, might have a fiddle with the wing, a range of different things that you can have a little think about. And uh, also just got to manage simple stuff as well to get the covers on because the cars have been so hot that they just become steam baths inside the cabin as well. And the radar kind of suggests that off the back of this nasty little cell it's not so bad but we'll wait and see. It took a long time for the rain to stop here last night. It left the track about 8 o'clock and it was still raining at that point but without the intensity but as you got closer to the city leaving the racetrack it was actually dry in some suburbs. Those lightning strikes have been active here. We've had an amazing week of weather, weather in yeah. Sydney. It's been pretty much the same pattern of uh, high temperatures, high humidity, hot start to the day, and then getting whacked in the late afternoon. While they're sorting it out, we'll take another break, come back and keep you up to date here at Sydney Olympic Park. So with 45 laps completed, we have a red flag. The race is stopped for the moment. We've pressed the pause button. We are suspended in the 38th and final race of the championship. Lightning, thunder, rain. Got a bit of everything this weekend. The conditions on track are just too bad at the moment. There's too much standing water around. It's just too dangerous. You'd be just inviting a massive repair bill, and we don't want to hurt any drivers or officials. So. Better to stop and wait. We do have a time certain finish of 5.41 local time plus one lap. We are just past 5 p.m. here in Sydney at the moment. So here is the radar. We are at Homebush there where the cursor is. You can see the yellow and orange. It's pretty high concentrate stuff. So let's have some highlights of how it's unfolded so far in this final race of the year. Scott McLaughlin on pole, but Garth Tander got the jump and took the lead. Mark Winterbottom straight to the back of the pack. Craig Lowndes back of the pack. He went off the road over at turn eight and managed to rejoin. Shane Van Gisbergen was fast early on as they all started on wet weather tyres, but it dried enough to go for slicks. It was a case of how long you waited. Marcus Ambrose, his return weekend to the championship. Bit of a lock up for the Xbox Ford when the race was suspended, was up to position 16. Tim Slade keeping a watchful eye on that car with that left rear on board Jack starting to fall down out of the car. They were keeping an eye on it in pit lane. Jamie Winkup putting the pressure on Chas Mostert and picking up the position. That was for fourth spot. And then everyone looked to the sky because the weather started to close in. Mark Winterbottom in the wall. Too much curb at turn eight. Tim Edwards could not believe what he was seeing as he was watching the runner-up position in the championship slipping away. This guy was moving himself into the box seat, Shane Van Gisberg and wink up. Very, very small. Stacking opportunity there behind his teammate Craig Lowndes. Tander stayed out longer and it worked because he popped out in the lead of the race. Rob Starr on the phone to James Courtney. Then safety car was called just as that happened. Tander slightly too much. Too deep at turn nine. Blake Smith gutted, handing the lead to Shane Van Gisberg and and that is why we are under the red flag suspension at the moment. So much water out there, lightning off in the distance, miserable weather at Sydney Olympic Park. Safety car was on the road, but in the end, it's brought the traffic into the fast lane of pit lane. And we are stopped with 45 laps completed. Shane Van Gisbergen is the race leader and looking good for second in the championship. If he can do that, It'll be his highest ever result in the points, and it comes with the single car Techno Autosports team. Garth Tander second, James Courtney third, Jamie Winkup fourth, Chas Mostard fifth from Tim Slade, Rick Kelly, Scott McLaughlin, Jason Bright, and Will Davison. As this rain continues to team down here in Sydney, no change at the moment. The race is still suspended. If you've just joined us, the safety car was sent out. The rain smashing down and for the third time this year the red flag is out the race is suspended we had it once yesterday we had it at bathurst in october 
but we're in a holding pattern and we're getting wet. Let's rejoin Mark Scaife and Neil Crompton. There's a massive thunderstorm over the top of Sydney Olympic Park at the moment and uh, the weather continues to interrupt proceedings out here at the moment. The race is suspended. Race number 38 of the championship. Frank Adamson on the race management channel for V8 Supercars just confirming to the teams you can pump tyres up, you can let them down, but you can't change them. But at the moment, nothing happening, Rihanna. I'd have learnt something from yesterday because I was in this garage when it was a bit frantic because you boys were looking pretty casual and then all of a sudden it was helmets on, race out to get into your car. So your helmet is staying on this time. Yeah, definitely. Leave it on. You never know when you get called back. It was a bit of a rush yesterday. So, yeah, we're having a pretty good day at the moment. We did fifth. Um, the rain's come, but hopefully we can get back out there, get two more positions would be nice, get on the podium and end the year off really well. But you never know with this weather around here, Sydney, it's pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy out there. Just uh, talk us through the conditions from your point of view. Yeah, it's very tricky. It gets to a point where the, the rain is when it's drizzling, it's not too bad. But once it just gets to a certain point where we're a bit too heavy, in the gullies over at nine and, and a couple other corners, it really pulls up with water because it's a street circuit and we put sandbags in the, you know, in the drain so we don't, you know, pollute obviously out the sea. So um, there's a lot going on out there. If it just drizzles, it's a nice day, but um, we're going all right at the moment. Thanks, Chaz. Good luck for the rest of it. Yeah, well, I can tell you, this to me looks like it's not going anywhere. And I dearly hope some of those drought-affected farmers out in central and western Queensland are getting something as those showers come through. Hey, Shane Van Gisbergen, mate, uh, we heard your radio call that the safety car was even uh, perhaps handling the wet weather better than these things, even on their wet tyres. <laughs> he wins. <laughs> I want whatever tyres he was on. But, yeah, it's just too dangerous. Like, we all want to race, but that's just, like, down the front straight, we were aquaplaning. And it's scary, but um, at the moment, looking at all this lightning, you've got to be scared for all the guys, camera guys and their cherry pickers and stuff. Like, it's not very nice weather here, that's for sure. Well, I reckon there you go. There's no better read on how bad it is out there when Shane Fing Gisbergen says it's scary. OK, mate? You're right. And it's bad in the garage. We actually have to reposition because it's just so dark in these garages, Jack. And that's exactly right. It's so dark in here, but I can imagine how dark it is out for there on the grid for you guys. Yeah, it is. I mean, the dash is so bright, you need to put your hand over it so you can actually see where you're going. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Look, I don't want to be a wuss, but that's damn dangerous out there. And if they think they're going to get racing inside half an hour, I think they're probably dreaming. And it's a shame for all the spectators and everyone, but unfortunately, it's hard enough keeping up with the safety car at 50k an hour. And, you know, our wet tyres just aren't up for it. So, um, anyway, it's a weird end of the year, isn't it? Two big storms and lightning and stuff. It's interesting <laughs> and jack unfortunately it's a weird end to the 2014 season for you you're not going to be on the grid full time in v two cars next year but i'm sure we'll see you in the enduros yeah i mean it's uh we've had a disappointing year obviously I've only been in the, in the 20s in the championship but you know i've got to thank charlie schwerkolt for the opportunity fpr and Joel went all the sponsors everyone for letting me be here you know and we made the top 10 shootout one of only two fords to do that and uh, i can hang my hat on that but you know the whole year is there and we didn't do a good enough job throughout so I'll have a think about it over Christmas and, yeah, hopefully I'll be back. I really want to win Bathurst now. I'm over the championship. I just want Bathurst. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to seeing you. Thanks, Jack. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, not a really nice place to be out here at the moment, I can say. You can see the tarps over the car because the race cars don't run the same rubbers and felts and all the bits and pieces to keep the water out of them. So that's why they've thrown these tarps under here and I'm actually hoping that in under here somewhere is Garth Tander. Oh, there you are, mate. <laughs> Hiding from I mate, you got no idea how bad. Well, you probably does. You've just been out driving around. Hey, really unfortunate. We we sympathise when you made that little error, mate. But hey, don't worry. We know how tough it was out there. Wouldn't uh, no problem. Yeah, just as soon as I touched the brake pedal, you know what it's like. Like I had that feeling. As soon as you touch the brake pedal, the front tyre locked up and couldn't get it unlocked. So uh, the boys are telling me just do everything you can to keep Shane behind because there will be a safety car. But you know he was pretty fast in the dry. He was pretty fast in the wet. So hopefully we go racing again here. But bit of rain around so you would love when you had the farm mate you would love this rain well i was just talking about those farms i hope we're getting stuff up there in those drought affected areas mate i really do but uh looking out yonder mate it 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 looks fairly settled i've got to say you might not be going much further yeah i mean the conditions are out there on the track a lot of people don't realize just how bad it is like like it is so sketchy you can't actually see where the track is and then the walls start it's just a gray shine you can't see anything so not only have you got the spray coming at you, but you just can't make any definition of all the objects out there. So it's sketchy, it's really hard work, and yeah, there's a lot of rain falling out of the sky. So, um, you know, I feel for all the people who are here. It's sending out the grounds, all the marshals, they're, you know, they're copying it at the moment, but, um, you know, it's a bit of a shame. 
And if it makes you feel any better, mate, a lot of people feeling for you drivers out there getting around. And if, I don't know if you've probably seen here, but with the metal floor, obviously, and all the water, we want to keep the water out of your car, mate. That floor down there gets very, very hot and it creates steam. And that's the worst thing for a driver. Vision is everything. So uh, we'll leave you to it, mate, and hope we get you out there again. Garth Tander with Mark Larkham there. Unbelievable scenes, aren't they? Incredible. And the bravest people out there are those that are holding brollies because if that lightning earth through, you'll light up about 400 people with a million volts. It's scary out there at the moment. Really on cue. I didn't know I had that power. Wow. Watch me do it again. We'll take a break and I'll practice it a couple of times. <laughs> Kidding yourself. Back in a tick. Kaboom. Kaboom indeed. I don't think I've ever heard that word used in V8 supercar racing this year. It's getting worse out there. This is really starting to bucket down. Thunder and lightning, not just for the safety of the drivers and the teams, but about the, the marshals and the officials and our cameramen, everyone involved with putting on this event who have worked so hard. The rain's still smashing down. If I were a betting man, I'm not really, but I don't think we're going to get back to racing because, of course, we do still have that time certain finish of now about another what, 40 odd minutes. So we'll sit and wait and watch and see. But we're under a red flag. We have a, a suspended 38th and final race of the championship. We have completed 45 laps when the leaders came over the line and brought them into the fast lane of pit lane behind the Petters SRT safety car. I'm just listening into some of the radio conversations. There's still some drivers plugged into their teams. Some have decided to leap out of their cars and go back into the, the garage. Some have stayed on board with helmets off. Crews are able to work on the cars. They're not allowed to change tyres or refuel at the moment. And the main priority is on keeping the interior as dry as possible. There's race control. Tim Schenken in the middle. Former V8 supercar driver. Bathurst winner Jason Bargwana. Driving standards observer to the left. And there's the other angle. Shane Howard from V8 supercars on the right. Okay, thank you. Jamie Winkup sitting by, waiting and watching. That's his uncle Graham, former racer there, just over his shoulder. And well, we've seen it all in V8 supercars, Neil, but uh, we're creating a little bit of history this year for doing things we've never really done before. You made the point before, Aaron, that third time in 2014 that we've seen this suspended race circumstance. Just going back to Graham Winkup that we saw there before, he was a dab hand in sports sedans back in the day. There he is. And uh, so it's a racing pedigree for the Wind Cup family. You would have raced against him, wouldn't you? I did not race against him, but I observed him <laughs> racing while I was being enthusiastic about watching motor racing. Oh. However, I did watch you out there. <laughs> uh, Mark did you ever drive like this, Neil, in these sorts of conditions in the old Amaru Park days? At Bathurst in 1992 we did, mm. and it wasn't a pleasant sight. It's uh, really incredibly difficult for officials and everybody attached to the V8 supercar universe at the moment to try and figure out how to manage this and uh, clearly it's going to take some time to allow the circuit to drain and uh, quarter past the hour local time and uh, time certain event to, due to finish at 41 past the hour and Roland Dane who's been overseas only returned to Australia today he's been in Asia he's come back to see the official crowning of his driver Jamie Winkup a record sixth title fourth in a row there's Jack Perkins with Charlie Schwerkolt and uh, that relationship dissolves in terms of a full-time drive for 2015. Charlie said to me earlier in the week he's really hopeful of trying to convince Jack to stay with him as an endurance driver next season and uh, Jack will canvas his options. You heard him say earlier that he really wants to go after a win at Mount Panorama now just like his dad did Larry Perkins great success over the years at uh, the Bathurst circuit. What's amazing here is that the radar kind of suggests that the worst of that cell has gone through, but the reality suggests otherwise. So you, outside the commentary box here at the moment, it, it, 
but you just cannot see. You can't see more than about 100 metres. The one thing that springs to mind, boys, is that the championship trophy doesn't have an open top just as well. It'll be flooded when Jamie gets his hands on it in <laughs> Look at that. some 50 minutes' time. That's nasty. That's getting worse. I'd be pulling the brollies down. Where you guys going down there? I think Look I'd like at to make that. That's the run up to turn eight. I believe the term mark is kaboom. Yes. Yeah, well, apparently it's a new word that Neil uses. It's um, nearly right. We're out of here. And that's in pit lane in the bunkers where the teams are all set up. That's Red Bull Being Racing. Molly, David Reynolds, uh, Bottle O Ford yeah. team for Rod Nash. He was 13th at the time of the race being suspended. So, I mean, I doubt very much whether we're going to see any further action. And that being the case, it's a Van Gisbergen victory, which moves him on to, what, five, five. I think, yep. so far this year. Aaron, and for Garth Tander and for James no Courtney, um, it's a nice full stop, something of an exclamation for those guys because they've clawed back some performance in 2014. Both of them have been on the podium, they've had polls, and, and uh, just generally, for, actually, they haven't, they've, but they've generally found some more form, haven't they? And... Uh,
but I'll stand there, Dave. Is anyone there about to do random band working on cars? what the deal is here, I'm just trying to find out where we're at. But, um, I'm tipping we'll be pushing the cars back up this way. The results there are Van Giz, myself, James, Jamie, Monster, Tim got up to six. Uh, Rick, uh, Nick was the other one to stay out as long as we did. We made a good game by that uh, ball to go around that lap, mate. Took the risk there and then just lost on the next one. So, good job.
Can you hear me? Well, due to extreme weather here at Sydney Olympic Park, the race has been abandoned. Race 38 of the year has been abandoned, and that means celebrations for these guys. Red Bull Racing and Jamie Wincup, our champion for 2014, now officially, and they celebrate that great moment. Uh, Scafie, you've been there, you've won it five times. This is a moment to be savoured for Jamie Wincup and Red Bull. It certainly is, Mark. He's just been such a, an unbelievable operator over the last four or five years. Neil Crompton's been saying all weekend about his strike rate of success, but this year again, and Neil and I asked him yesterday in V8 Extra, we said, what's your best year? And probably in his answer, I think he thinks this year. So he had to flick his shoes off because look at the water. So he's barefoot coming back into the area that we're in now. <laughs> he won't be too disappointed though, will he? No. So Jamie Wincup on his way to the podium and getting set for a, a great celebration. And now our apologies there for the loss of the signal. The storm that's just been through here was horrific, I think is fair to say. <laughs> and yeah, and uh, knocked out our signal, simple as that. So uh, our apologies for that. And of course, we're sad that the race didn't end the way that we would have liked with a great showdown, but hey, you take what you get, don't you? That's the way it finished this year for us. Yeah, amazing. Uh, particularly when you consider that we had a race suspension at Bathurst and then we had one yesterday due weather and another one today. And we've just had a, a week of this in, in Sydney in particular. And uh, But the good news is, as Mark Larkham suggested, parts of New South Wales are getting uh, some much needed water at the moment but still an intense motor race we're going to have a look at some highlights very very shortly but uh, disappointing for Scotty McLaughlin to have the pole and to squander a bit of margin early in the game he lost some time in the pits with his stop he ended up back down the order a little bit but there are a couple of other blokes that have done well out of this profit for the Holden Racing Team duo yeah. it looks like they've finished the season strongly and that's been important for them as well pretty wild first corner there Mark Winterbottom making contact and remember, he's been battling with Van Gisberger for second in the championship lounge with a really difficult day and rib injury from his crash in qualifying yesterday. And actually, at the end of this, he's probably one of the guys to say, I don't mind getting out of the car, the amount of pain that he was in. Marcus Ambrose did a very good job, got to 16th. So did this man. He was the first guy. He had a little drama with the air jack, and there was a bit of controversy with whether he needed to make a pit stop as part of that problem. 
as it turned out, he come from 16th to 8th. There was a good battle going on in the middle of the field, and then look at these conditions. We've never seen rain like this. And that was a big mistake there for Mark Winterbottom, who was battling with Dale Wood for 20th position and battling for the championship, as I said, in, in the second position for Lowndes and Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen here making that stop. And Gus Tander profited, didn't he? You said the Holden Racing Team had a really good way to finish, but he stayed out longer and he got away with that. It's a slight little bit of a stacking issue there for Jamie Winkup in the stop after Craig Lowndes was serviced. Gus coming in last, but he got a gain from it and then have a look at this big slide this big aquaplane slide Neil for Shane Van Gisbergen I'm surprised at how much pace Garth must have had on the slick tyre for that extra lap Scafie but that little mistake down at turn nine upset Blake Smith no end in the garage there in the uh, bumpy braking area it's unstable in the dry let alone in the wet and there's painted white lines down there but the other thing I'd just like to do is also just pay tribute to Shane Van Gisbergen at the back end of this championship. I mean, he took a massive blow at Mount Panorama. He's bounced back, he's earned a lot of points, and he's climbed his way back up the championship here and resolved that battle. And look at that extraordinary scene. And again, Neil, we should... Big shout out to all our volunteers and officials for today and over the weekend and the course of our championship this year. But those conditions out there, just extreme flag marshals out there in the midst of it. Yeah, and Scafie, the end result of all that is officially race 38 has been declared. Shane Van Gisbergen is your winner. Garth Tander in second, then James Courtney. Jamie Wincup, uh, despite all he has done this year, still finishing inside the top four in this shortened final race. Chaz Mostert representing Ford in fifth spot. Back from there, a good finish for Nick Percat in 11th. Fabian Coulthard sitting in 12th spot. James Moffat took the Nissan to 15th, just behind Todd Kelly. Scott Pye, 21st. David Wall, 22nd. Jack Perkins finishing in 23rd to finish up his time for the moment with V8 Supercars. Team Red Bull, very, very exciting moment for them now as they get set to claim the championship for 2014 as Jamie's car is brought forward amongst the enormous crowd here, which is enjoying being undercover in the giant shed at the moment. So everything just about set for our podium and our presentation of our champion for 2014. Let's go to Rihanna. Thanks, Brett. Your final podium for season 2014. Introducing the winners for race 38. First place, Shane Van Gisbergen, Team Techno VIP Pet Foods. Your second place driver, Garth Tander, the Holden Racing Team. And your third place driver, James Courtney, the Holden Racing Team. And your winning team, Jonathan Webb, Team Techno VIP Pet Foods. And presenting our trophies in our third place trophy, Glenn Cooper, the chairman of Cooper's Brewery. Presenting our second place trophy, Gary Campbell, the general manager of NRMA Motorserve. And the winning team, Karen McNamara, the federal member for Dobell. And presenting our first place trophy, Alan Evans, the director, naming rights sponsor, National Roads and Motorists Association. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 V8 Supercars Sydney NRMA 500 Race 38 winners. <laughs> And now to announce our 2014 V8 Supercars champion. From Red Bull Racing Australia, please congratulate the 2014 V8 Supercars champion, Jamie Winkup. Making the presentation of the championship trophy is Deputy Premier Troy Grant, Minister of Tourism and Major Events, New South Wales. Oh, what a fantastic moment and history in the making, guys. As, as you well know, both of you from lifetimes in this sport, that is such an outstanding achievement. And we get to see this man continue on for the next few years and see just how far he can go, Scafie. Oh, look, he's an absolute legend of the sport at this point with six championship wins, Barrettes and the superlatives, it's very, very hard to explain what this guy's achieved in recent times. And we're watching one of the all-time best drivers 
ever in our sport. Got to consider that a bad year for Jamie since 2007 has been a runner-up in the championship on a couple of occasions. Even yesterday, he stamped his authority on the business by jumping out there and grabbing another couple of key wins. And today, he still gets points. On that topic, there's the champ points. Still awaiting official confirmation on all of that, but it will be Jamie Wincup, of course. But Shane Van Gisbergen importantly gets that runner-up position. Go RD. Go easy. That's a headache in a bottle. <laughs> There'll be none left for any of the other oh, team my members. goodness. <laughs> Man's <laughs> thirsty. And uh, Mark Winterbottom in position three. Craig Lowndes position four. He was really hurting towards the end of the championship. But seriously, congratulations to all at Red Bull Racing Australia. They've earned it in 2014. It has been an extraordinary year for Jamie Wincup. It's been a pleasure to watch it as well. Uh, quite a remarkable finish in the end and a, a huge gap for him in first place. And you get the feeling now that the pressure's been lifted off Jamie Wincup and he can really enjoy it.